Hi, today I will explain how to work with mouse events in three-dimensional world. At the moment, we have a minimum set for functioning of an application using Alternativa. So, we have created a container, a camera, which has been added to this container, and we have added on enter frame handler, which updates the controller and gives camera render command. Let's start by creating a group of objects which will react to mouse. Let it be a field composed of flat squares. Let's say with the size 5 by 5. To see this place, we will need some material. We will need a variable where an object will be initialized. Then we will add this object to the container. To create a field 5 by 5, we should add 25 squares. We will do it in the nested loop. One will follow a horizontal line, the other vertical line. We create a plane with size 100 by 100. We assign material to it, then we set coordinates x and y, expressing them via variables counted by the loops. We multiply by 110 so that there is a gap of 10 pixels among the squares with size 100 by 100. And we add the plane to the container. So let's see what we got. It seems everything is all right. Now let's add to each plane mouse handler, which reacts on mouse over and mouse out. This will look as usual mouse event handler, except that event names should be taken not from mouse event class, but from mouse event 3D class. We create functions that will be triggered when an event happens. As a parameter, these functions get an object of the class event, from which one can extract different information, for example, information who exactly has dispatched this event. In our case, which plane exactly was the event source. Link to this object is located within target property. So, since we are sure that the event source will be a plane type object, we create a variable of this type inside the handler and convert property event target to the same plane type. Having got the access to the object of the event source, we can try to affect it somehow. For example, to use glow filter on mouse over. When mouse leaves the plane space, we need to remove this glow. So, let's look at the result. Everything works the way it was supposed. Now, to make it a little bit more exciting, let's add a cube that we will be able to move within this field. We perform the same familiar actions. We set the cube size 80 by 80 by 80 so that it is a little smaller than the field cell. It should be also raised a little along X Z. Otherwise, it will intersect with the field straight in the middle. So, let's see what we got. From this perspective, it's not clearly seen that it is a cube, but it is a cube indeed. Now, let's add to our cube mouse and handler, which will be dispatched on click. On this handler, let the cube raise a little above the field and get ready to start moving. Let's add variable boxes ready, in which information about cube readiness will be stored. Now let's add one more handler to the field squares, so that if the cube is ready, on square click it will move exactly on it. In this handler we will need a variable, which will store a square event source, so that coordinates could be taken from it and assigned to the cube. Let's add check of the cube readiness, and if it's ready, let's move it to the coordinates of the square which we have clicked on. Let's also set to false its readiness value and bring it closer back to the field. Sorry, I have forgotten that its initial location along Zx is 50, and therefore we will raise it to 100. 
Let's see what we got. The cube raises and moves to the square we click on. Everything is fine. So the lesson is over. Thank you for your attention.